Welcome to Piano Video Lessons. I'm Lisa, and this is Grade 1 Piano Technical Exercises and Etudes. It's Unit 1 of Year 2 at pianovideolessons.com. In today's lesson, we're going to learn the etude Morning Greeting. This is by Cornelius Gerlitt, and it's from his Opus 117, number 13. You can find it in your ebook on page 16. You can click the info card to come on over to pianovideolessons.com if you'd like to have your own copy of the ebook or to find the complete lesson index. So this piece of music is another piece by Gerlitt. The last piece we learned was also by him. And you can see here's the piece and there's also a page of uh, study notes that go along with this piece of music. So some things we always like to check before we begin to play any piece of music is the basic information about the piece. So some basic things are, what is the key signature? So first of all, we need to look for that. And I see at the beginning of the piece, there is an F sharp marked in here. So that gives us two choices. It could be in G major, but it could also be in the relative minor of G major. And if you've been following the lessons up to this point, you will know that the relative major of G major is E minor. So now we have to decide which it actually is. And the best way to do that, well, there's a few ways. A few things have to line up. But one of them is to look at the very last note for your first clue. And the very last note here is G. So it's leaning towards G major. Then we can also look at the beginning of the piece and see what kind of chords we see. And the very first chord we have here is the G major chord. So also a very good clue that we are in G major. And then we can just listen to the piece to see if it sounds happy or sad. And I'll play some of it for you right now. Yeah, it sounds happy. So we are in the key of G major. Now the other thing is, what is the time signature? And this piece is in 3-8. So we're counting to 3, and we're counting 8th notes. And the pattern for this is strong, weak, weak. So we're going to have 1, 2, 3 in every measure. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And 3 of these 8th uh, notes, to fill up the full measure, will be a dotted quarter note, an equal amount of time. So you can see the left hand is using lots of dotted quarter notes. Um, another thing we can look for is the style of the piece. So it says to play allegretto, which means a little bit quickly. And also we can check for some dynamics. And I see right away it's marked mezzo piano, medium soft. And I see a little bit of a diminuendo. Uh, on the third line, getting softer. You can't really see that very well. Let's make it a little more obvious. That's just two lines, and it's right here. And then we have a crescendo. We've learned about those before, which is gradually getting louder, and then another diminuendo toward the end. All right, so that is the outline of the dynamics. And then also, I'm looking to see if there are any slurs or ties in the music. And I see a tie right here, right here, right here, right here. So the melody motif has ties in it. And this is going to give it a little bit of an interesting sound and also give the left hand a little bit of an opportunity to get its notes down without having to coordinate them as with the right hand. So I'm going to go ahead and play the whole thing for you now so you know what we're headed for. And here we go. Alright, so you might have noticed that I played some repeats in this piece, and you should be on the lookout for those as you play. There's a backward repeat here, 
And there's another one here at the end, but it takes you back from this point in the piece. This piece is in binary form because there's an A section and a B section, but we actually call this rounded binary because we come back around to the A section at the end of the B section. So rounded binary is going to look like this, A section, B section with A at the end. So we have rounded binary, straight binary, and it just has A and then B. B is different from A and it does not repeat again. Okay, so that's the form of this piece. So now uh, some, some of the points here that you can review before learning the piece. So it says, locate the measures that start with the note G. So let's just quickly go through and see which notes, th which measures those are. So this one, this one, this one, and this one, this one, this one, quite a few. And then it says D is the dominant note of the key of G. Locate the measures that start with the note D. So let's see what we have here. D, 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 and then back to G. So the B section tends to start off with the note D. So it's focusing more on the dominant chord. It also says look for the types of rhythm used in this piece. And so we already found this one and this one. And then we also have some quarter notes. So let's just include that on our chart. And when we have a quarter note, we don't have a full measure, so we need some silence. We end up with a rest that looks like this, which is an eighth rest, which counts for one count in 3-8 time. Then it asks for, do you see any descending scale passages? What happens at the end? Hmm. Okay, so that gives you a clue that something happens at the end that's not what you would think. So coming down here, I see it's coming down the G scale, coming down from G, F sharp, three notes, E, D, C, finger three comes over, and the scale would continue on A, G, but instead we're going to go four, two, one. So we just do this one little turnaround right here at the end of that scale. And then there's another scale passage here. It's exactly the same thing because of the rounded binary, we have the same format coming through both times. All right, so that's something interesting to be on the lookout for. And then it notes the rounded binary. It says locate and label these sections. And then it says practice the right hand on a tabletop, naming the finger numbers that you're playing. Use the intervals as a guide to determine which finger to play. So we've talked a lot about intervals in past lessons, but just a quick overview. I'll draw a little staff right here. If we have notes that move from line to line, that is a skip or a third. And if we have notes that move from line up to a bigger space here, that is a fourth. If we have notes that just move uh, from line to the very next space, that is a neighbor or a second. And then we can have bigger intervals like a fifth, but you see the idea here. We're just gonna name them according to the distance between the notes. Hopefully you already know about intervals before this lesson, but we would just go ahead and play on our tabletop playing one and then say the finger numbers that we will play next. So one, three, five, tie, and that's a neighbor for two. One, three, five are skips, neighbor, four, skip, two. And then we have one, five, and then we're going to come down the fingers. Four, three, two, one, and then we're given three. We go up to four, down a skip to two, and then one. And then here we have uh, four and two with A on the top, then still A on the top. A second, four and three, four and two, four and three, four and two, and then one, skip to three, skip to five. Then we have five neighbor, four, skip to two. This measure right here, five, four, two, this is a little tricky if you're not expecting it because we've been playing all of these triads and we're starting on a five. So we're sort of expecting line, 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 but we don't have that. We have line, space, space from going a neighbor and then a skip. Okay, let's be on the lookout for that. And then one, three, five, hold, four, two. One, three, five, hold, four, two. One, five, four, three, two, one. Three, neighbor up, four, skip, two, one. 
So, um, use intervals. Okay, where are the identical or nearly identical passages? Well, that would be here and here, which is the A section coming back to the A section. So you can just pop another A right on there. They're nearly identical because this one ends with a diminuendo and the first one does not. And then it says, make a practice plan. You may wish to work hands separately before working hands together. You may wish to practice in sections, four measures at a time. So one, two, three, four, that would be the end of a section. Let's just see what happens if we play up to there. So let's try the right hand. Tie, four, two, one, tie, four, two. So that's just a G major triad going up and down. Left hand has one and three and then two with five. Oh, look at that. We have to open our hand to a fifth, even though we only have four fingers here. So be careful that your five has reached down. This part of your hand is staying over its own keys, but your five has to do this little bit of extra work to get all the way down to D. So we'll try that with both hands. We're gonna go both going up. Now, while you tie, the left will play that big reach both lift and start the next measure. Same thing again. So you could practice that until it flows comfortably. And now the next part starts with the left hand on the same notes and the right reaches up an octave that goes from G to G. So get used to that distance. Close your eyes, practice reaching an octave. Now we're gonna come down the G scale. We've left our left hand rest and then we're gonna finish with those same notes that we were playing at the beginning. So we could practice that part again. Three comes over, left hand joins in, and then rest. So practicing those two halves of the A section. Now the B section, one, two, three, four, that would take us up to here. Let's go ahead and try that hand separately. So left hand now has D major triad, hold, two, four, five, three, one, hold, two, four. So you see the triad pattern coming up and down. And the right hand is gonna play four and two with F sharp on the bottom then four and three. So we have uh, first a third, then a second, A on the top, every time here, A on the top. So let's try that with both hands. So D major, hold the left, change the right, two, four. D major triad, hold the left, two, four. So you can practice that little section. And here you probably want the left hand to be louder. It's singing this little melody that we had. But now it's singing here. So if you kept the right hand staying louder here, it would sound like this. Which is not as pleasing. So accent the weight into your left hand in this beginning of the B section. Then here we have some D triads. So we have, um, we're doing the same two notes in the right hand, which is really just two of the notes from the D major triad, but there's no D. So the left hand starts the D triad again, but then the right hand plays one. Then the left hand comes way up into the treble clef area. And then we're going to have a D here to finish this and it puts us right back in position for that A section. So taking this part of the B section again, we're going to start off with basically a D major triad without this D, fingers four and two, and then D major, D major takes over, now five neighbor skip and now it's the A section again. And you've already practiced this. So just crescendo in here and then diminuendo. I would say don't spend a lot of time practicing this because you've already practiced it. Now is the time to go back and assess which of these four sections gave you the most trouble. Maybe play the whole piece through and see which sections feel like you have to think the hardest or if you actually have mistakes then take them apart and put them back together correctly. Um, so there's sort of a saying that goes slow practice will give you fast progress fast practice will give you slow progress. Okay, so keep your practice slow and look out for all of these. Now, if you're playing it through, we have to repeat the A section because there's a repeat sign. Now, 
now we're on the B section. Keep the left hand louder than the right. Tie. D major getting softer. Now five, four, two. Back to that A. Mezzo piano. Right hand is leading this. Here's that scale with this different ending. Now we're back again repeating the B section. D triad. Five, four, two. And that's the whole piece. Great work. All right, so our next lesson, we're going to work on minor triads. So we've already learned solid and broken major triads, all the major scales, the harmonic minor scales, and the natural minor scales, the chromatic scale, the um, contrary motion scale of C, and we've just got a couple more elements left, which are the solid and broken triads in the minor keys. So come on back for that lesson, and I'll see you soon.